first thing I wanted to ask, um, uh, because this is sort of, we're in America, uh, not everyone is as familiar with the concept of Mugai. Going into this, did like to what level of familiarity did you have with the uh, sort of character of uh, cultural history, uh, the Mugai, yeah? Um, I think every, I mean, Maine and I are uh, different tribes. Yeah. Uh, so we come from very different parts, very different countries within the same country. Um, but every tribe has their own Mugai, has their own um, understanding of it. Of a spirit, usually there's stories to, to scare children or teach you lessons. Um, and actually, uh, as a result of the stolen generations, uh, the um, forced removal of Aboriginal children, uh, tribes created stories to teach kids to run away from the white man when, they, when he turned up to steal them. So um, it was a, you know, it's this weird thing where um, culture was shifted because of a necessity to protect our children. Uh, but in terms of a Mugai, like we all, yeah, we all, shit ourselves basically <laughs> from when we're a very young age yeah. because they use it our parents aboriginal parents love to use evil spirits to scare you into going to sleep yeah. <laughs> and bella what was your familiarity with it interestingly because these two guys uh shot a proof was it wasn't a proof of concept yeah, but they shot much, a much, short yeah. uh called the Mugai. so that was my first introduction to it as a concept and uh yeah it really stayed with me that short and also the script uh, and I just thought, what an incredible idea to teach and, and a vehicle in terms of just the film to like teach this story, uh, but in a way that's, I mean, at least in the film, is really entertaining. And I think with the film, like, it is an introduction of this, like, creature, but also you're touching on so much that goes on in, like, your culture. Was there a part of the story that you were excited for people to see or understand, even if... Um, it was challenging because just seeing how you're treated at the gas station or seeing how you're treated at the doctor's office. Yeah. Yeah, and I, th I feel like that's an everyday life experience for a lot of Indigenous people yeah. um, in Australia, particularly. I know around the world as well, yeah. but um, in this context. And so to highlight that in this particular um, film and in this particular genre was as much as um, a storytelling and educational moment, it's also exciting as a, a vehicle for entertainment. Yeah. Um, and because you see that with, I think Get Out is the North Star in, in, in the genre, you know? Um, and I think you, you're aiming for that kind of, that balance of entertainment and, um, you know, finding, finding how, how you can tell a story with those educational elements, but mm. it, it being it being um, affecting, you know. Yeah. So I, th I, th I think that's the, that's the aim with with the film, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. It's also been incredible for me just I don't know being here the last couple of days and talking to Americans and and people ask me what I'm here for the film and what it's about and no one has known anything about the Stolen Generation. Um, no one's been like, oh yeah, I heard about that. That mm. you know, I, I don't know if you know. Is it just because Australia is really good at keeping it quiet, or so I think it's really important that this film's here. Yeah, Australia likes to export, uh, you know, bronze bodies on Bondi Beach, running along <laughs> in slow motion, um, and pretending that we're really, really good at and not being racist. But it's an incredibly racist country, and um, it's you know, it's it's quite. I mean, here, like we, I think we all feel the weight sitting here, feeling the weight of responsibility to talk about the truth of our nation, but also wanting to celebrate what it is to be bringing an Indigenous film to an incredible festival like this um, and, and the joy that, you know, it, um, it brings for artists for their stories to reach an audience. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's really striking too, even something as small as like seeing how uh, black is used in the context of your film versus like how black is used in America and similar. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so it's almost like that, uh, cultural exchange like yeah, I, I found think, really cool yeah yeah there's a there's definitely I think a lot um, for American audiences to learn in terms of um, the identification of Aboriginal people and how we choose to identify ourselves based on concepts that colonization introduced to us like concepts like race <laughs> which didn't exist 200 and something years ago um, so I think there'll be so many conversations, you know, whether it's about, yeah, the everyday treatment of an Aboriginal person or a fair, you know, a fair-skinned white passing Aboriginal person 
or the ongoing um, intergenerational trauma from some events that happened 40, 50 years ago or 20 years ago. Um, so I think um, it's, it's pretty jam packed with mm. a lot of information. Um, shameful information, um, but John's done a, an incredible job, I think, at uh, putting it into a package that's so kind of consumable. And mm. genre Uni is is the great is is that's yeah. the great thing. Genre is always perfect for that stuff. Yeah. And the universality of a family going through yeah. a traumatic experience, yeah. you know. Yeah. So I think that's um, everyone can find their way in connection yeah. in that story. Mm. I suppose. I guess a quick thing I was wondering, because you said it can be like the idea of Mugai can kind of vary tribe to tribe. Like when we see the creature itself, is that like representative of kind of an agreed upon idea of what the creature may look like? Or is it a very like specific take? Like, I, uh, to my knowledge, that was a, it's uh, a very um, specific take up front on John's behalf, I think. Yeah. Um, how do we represent kind of extremely damaging racist policies <laughs> and put them into a mythical creature. Um, and, you know, and I guess that's it. It's, it's, it's sort of exaggerating and amplifying things that are, you know, like long spindly fingers. I don't want to talk about it too much, actually, because <laughs> he's actually really scary looking. Actually, it's really, really scary. Um, um, but um, no, the Mugai, I think everyone's like, you know, what do you mob call? Uh, we say mamu <laughs> in my language in, in Western Australia. Um, mamu, yeah. Um, I've forgotten what we call it, but everyone's got different. Every tribe does have a little person, though, like a little man, a little or a little little evil spirit. Um, they call them little fellas, and they're 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 probably the most common yeah. um, across Australia, across all yeah. the tribes. But I think this specific Mugai is, was based on a lot of conversations that John had had creatively. Shari, you're really going through it in this <laughs> film. Um, in the film, yeah, 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 in the film. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's true, but I mean, it's sort of, how did you feel the support in Maiden and Bella? Like, did it feel like the most challenging moments were when your characters aren't as supportive of someone who is clearly having a terrible experience? I think as an actor. You want the fun in anything, yeah. you know, and I'm, my character is pretty horrible at times, but I relished those moments, you know, um, because you want to show the facets of all life, you know, and I think I wanted to work with Shari for a long time and it was, um, we'd known each other for a long time. And I think in this, there, there were scenes that we actually push each other to the limit mm -hmm. and it was fun you know, connecting and locking eyes in that scene and going going there. And I, I think um, every actor relishes in, in, in those experiences. Mm. Bella? <laughs> it's interesting. I, yeah, it's so funny because I don't want to give anything away, <laughs> yeah. you know. Um, but yeah, Becky's pretty opportunistic and uh, she knows her limits and she's just like hitched herself to the right wagon and uh, she's going to ride that all the way to the top no matter really what it could take, hypothetically speaking. <laughs> um, but yeah, there's also, you know, I think John at times had more compassion for my character than I might have at times, which is not a good spot to be in as an actor, you know, ever, <laughs> um, if you're playing the character. And then a thing that we've been asking a lot is sort of with everything that goes on a film set, it can be very busy, artisans working at the highest level. Sort of, uh, how do you keep focused? Do you have any specific strategies on how you stay on track and kind of keep in the moment of playing the scene or anything that goes into it? I mean, obviously it varies from set to set and yeah. story to story. And um, I mean, there were certainly moments, like it's, it's a horror film and it deals with like terrifying subject matter, um, but oftentimes, you actually need to, in between, you know, setups and, and whatnot or takes, just give yourself the time to be silly and laugh and come back to a, a really kind of um, immature way of operating for a moment uh, to free yourself up, I guess. So, uh, Maine and I would get the giggles quite often. <laughs> um, and, um, and actually, the AD would be like, that's cool, let them go, they need that today. Like, mm. it's been a challenging day or a challenging few days. Um, but then, yeah, it's just sort of, I mean, for me, it was just a lot of like, don't talk to me <laughs> because I'm sitting on a bed mm. losing my mind. <laughs> um, I, think, I think every actor has their individual yeah. process and, and I, I think it's being respectful of, of another person's process. And yeah. obviously, you've got cameras and you've got the director and the DOP, everything 
um, amongst that, but it's finding, knowing wh what's your limit and wh wh what's, what works for you and how you, um, you know, get yourself there.